hey guys, what's the word on DeepMind's protein folding breakthrough? Yes. And I'm wondering, is that what AlphaFold 2 was about? Yeah, I'm thinking it was. Yeah. Okay. I thought so at the time, but I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Different person. But, uh, terrifying. <laughs> I find it terrifying. I, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I First of all... There's... Wait, wait. You need... We... I, you need to say what this is. Okay. There has been a long running, so there's a long running problem in biology, which is that genes encode proteins. Proteins are long strings of amino acids. Those strings of amino acids don't do anything. What happens is they collapse into machines that do things. And we're talking about literal machine-like entities, you know. Nucleotide bases. Uh what are we talking about? No. The genes aren't made of amino acids. No, the genes aren't, but they encode these strings of amino acids which collapse into machines which do stuff, okay? The problem is that there are an indefinitely large number of conformations that these strings of amino acids could collapse into, and if they collapsed yes. into all of them, they wouldn't work. In fact, they would never work. But they don't collapse into all of them. They collapse into forms that do things. And in fact, these forms are sensitive to things like the temperature. So one of the reasons that a small fever can actually, you know, a fever of five or six degrees Fahrenheit can be lethal is that your enzymes only have the proper conformation to do their job at that temperature. And so as you change the pH or change the temperature, the positive charge here that sticks to the negative charge there. If you put in too much energy, it breaks, and so the enzyme doesn't work. So in any case... Well, and also, I mean, that 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 folding structure, you know, the technical term being denatured, it just starts to, to come undone right. at temperature. And so the denaturing of a protein means that nothing on the surface of that protein looks the same as it does when it's in its normal range. Right, but, you know, you could have two different creatures. You could have a creature whose normal temperature was 102 Fahrenheit, another creature for which it was 98, mm -hmm. right? And the enzyme for the one at 98 won't work at 92 and vice versa. So denatured is one way to say it, but the point is outside of a narrow range for an endotherm, no, for a uh, um, homeotherm, mm -hmm. um, the range for viable temperatures for that enzyme will be relatively narrow. And anything outside of it or a change in pH will cause the parts of the string of amino acids that bond to some other part through these hydrogen bonds yeah. um, will change. And any change in the outside structure will initially decrease the effectiveness of the enzyme and then eventually make it not effective at all. Um, so anyway, the point is, how these things fold up into some structure that is reliable and does the job is a very long-standing, very difficult problem. Like 50 years we've been aware of this problem and made not that much progress. Yeah, figuring out the list of amino acids and the order they're in is, is child's play by comparison. Right, right. We can get the sequence, but then the point is, okay, if I show you a sequence, what's it going to turn into, yeah. smart guy? You know, and know. it's like, well, we generally don't know. Yeah. Um, so it's the... Primary structure is the string, tertiary structure is the conformation, and then quaternary structure is you add multiple proteins together. What's secondary? Uh, da, da, da. I don't remember. Oh, it's beta sheets and... Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, so, so bigger certain, level of folding. Level, yeah, so yeah. secondary and tertiary are both folding. Yeah. But anyway, there's been this long-standing yeah. contest to try to spur progress in this field, which is we give you a sequence, you tell us how it's going to fold up. And this year, huge progress was made by DeepMind, which is Google's artificial intelligence uh, platform. Um, and basically, the idea was that somehow DeepMind has it, has come close to solving the protein folding problem. If the date, if the result holds up, and we don't know that it will, because frankly, it's not a published paper, so we can't really look at it. We can see, mm. you know, here's the s sequence they were given, here's the prediction, and here's what the actual confirmation of the thing looks like, but it's not like we have a full analysis to look at, but it looks incredibly promising. Now, the interesting part of it, I think, is I think it implies that the problem is simpler than we think, which it almost has to be, because for evolution to successfully navigate the... That's how you evade terrifying. <laughs> Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. But so if you imagine that in order, you know, the thing that we say in biology, which you and I have been ranting about for a long time, 
we say, oh, you have genes, uh, mutations happen all the time, most of them are bad, some of them don't have any effect. Every so often, just by random, a gene happens to get changed in a way that increases the blah, 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 blah. And, and suddenly you have ostriches. Right. Yes. And the answer is, actually, that's too weak a process to create these marvelous little machines. Um, what's more, these marvelous little machines, altering them slightly by this mechanism doesn't change, you know, one kind of amphibian into another. And so there's a whole bunch of the story that doesn't quite add up and it's missing. And, you know, I'm firmly committed to the idea that what's missing is Darwinian too. I'm not arguing that this is a challenge to Darwinism in any mm -hmm. serious way. I think we need more and better Darwinism. But nonetheless, if it is true, so the explorer mode thing that I keep getting in trouble for, the explorer mode thing suggests that selection will, will very quickly discover mechanisms to search design space more efficiently than it could at pure random, mm -hmm. right? That's not a mystical claim. That's not a designer. That selection cheats by figuring selection out... Selection will have heuristics. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what you're arguing. Right. Now, the reason that comes up here is because... Chances are, and I don't know that we know because the way these deep learning algorithms figure out how to solve a problem doesn't necessarily tell you what they've discovered, right? Mm -hmm. What I suspect has happened is the deep learning algorithm has latched on to the product of the heuristics and started to go mm. backwards. And so the point is to the extent that there are patterns, there are themes in the folded up proteins that would be the result of a heuristic that searches only here and here, not all the intervening space that DeepMind would be in a better position to spot that thing and that ultimately it will tell us what we didn't know about the way design space is searched, right? So in some sense, I, I think this is potentially really interesting. That's awesome. amazing. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that, that doesn't sound as terrifying. Um, and it, it put me in mind of, this isn't, I don't, I don't think I can exactly go full circle on this, but it put me in mind of the heuristics that we are familiar with from systematics, from, from how it is that we infer deep history, how it is that we build evolutionary trees and, um, and deduce uh, who's most closely related to whom. Uh, and because once you've got more than you know, a few taxa with a few characters each, uh, you basically can't, you, you, you can't search all of the possible tree topologies in any reasonable amount of time, even with the computing power that we have now. And so you have to, you know, basically different software, uh, different phylogenetic systematic software is going to be using different heuristics. And the heuristics are generally, um, generally not public. And so you don't, you pick a piece of software and yes, you plug in different assumptions and hopefully as few as possible. And you end up with a set of most likely trees given your particular data set. But in that case, you don't have anything to compare it to. Like maybe you, you compare it over here using this data set and over here using this data set and maybe with a couple of different pieces of software. Um, but because we don't have time travel, we can't actually go back and know for sure what the history of relationships is. Whereas with this, you actually have the empirical answer of like, what does the thing look like when it's folded? What does the protein actually right. look like? Let's see if DeepMind got it right. Oh, they did, and so fast. Right. It did. I don't know what DeepMind's pronouns are. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. I, I think wonder that's if a great others question. have asked that. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm stopped, stopped in my tracks by that <laughs> <Sorry>. question. <laughs> well, I was stopped in my tracks by calling it a they, so. Yeah, yeah. all right. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I, look, there's all sorts of reason to be terrified about the amount of power that we are gaining and the fact that we will almost certainly screw up the application of uh, the technology that results. But from the point of view of having a total head scratcher with respect to how proteins are going to fold up versus having some window into the heuristics, um, I'd say this one... Um, we should be real careful with it, but could be awesome yeah. to discover what we didn't know. And my okay. guess is there's going to be a kind of a eureka sort of a moment in, yeah. in once we figure out what Deep, deep Mind did. Okay. Well, I hope I hope you're right. It's rare that uh, I'm more pessimistic than you. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> let's let's hope you're right here. 